Hi weirdos, it's Ashley from Keep It Weird. What you're about to hear is a clip from our Patreon exclusive episode, Sacre Bleu, Les Ennuis. <laughs> How do you hear the full episode? By joining our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash keepitweirdpodcast. By joining, you will get at least two full-length bonus episodes a month, even when we're on hiatus. You'll also get a discount on merch if you want to buy yourself a t-shirt, tank top, or hoodie. We give shout-outs to our patrons on the show. And on the last day of every month, we send out a newsletter that's full of upcoming horror, paranormal, and crime-related movie and TV announcements, weird news stories from that month, true crime time with Lauren, and even a handful of real-life scary stories just like the ones we tell on our Listener Ghost Stories episodes. So head to www.patreon.com slash keepitweirdpodcast to donate one, five, or ten dollars to our show once, or you can set it up to donate monthly. Every penny goes to producing the show and making sure that the weird keeps on weirding. We hope to see you there. So, first up, what's the frequency, Kenneth? Do you know that song? Huh? What's the frequency? No. Kenneth. Okay, so it's R.E.M. It's not just a college radio hit by R.E.M. from the 90s. There's actually a really fucked up story behind it, although the entire fucked upness of it wasn't revealed until long after the song was written, recorded, and released. So I'm going to just start and go chronologically. Okay. So in 1986, CBS Evening News anchor Dan Rather was walking to his apartment in Manhattan and he was attacked by a man on Park Avenue. There were two men present, one that was repeatedly hitting Rather and saying, Kenneth, what is the frequency over and over again? And the other man was just there. Um, a doorman ran over to Dan Rather's aid, like, to help him, and the two men ran off. And at the time, Dan was asked, like, what did the guy mean when he said, Kenneth, what's the frequency? And Dan said, like, I don't know. I got mugged. Who understands these things? <laughs> like, I wish... I'm pretty busy. I wish I knew who did it and why, but I have no idea. And the story was so strange that people actually doubted the assault took place at all or doubted that this was the full story. They thought maybe Dan Rather knew the guy and claimed he didn't because maybe it was something he was trying to cover up. Ooh, it a gay love affair. Right? Something like that. It wouldn't be the first time or the last time that a celebrity yeah. invented an attack for publicity or to cover up something else that happened. But in this instance, luckily, the doorman from the nearby building was able to confirm not only the attack, but also the weird thing this guy kept repeating. But still, it was just kind of this weird piece of pop culture and the world moved on. New York is full of crazy people. Who fucking knows what this was all about? So in 1994, R.E.M. used What's the Frequency, Kenneth, as a song title in a song that's just kind of about a look at Generation X through the eyes of an older narrator. And it was a really popular song. It's still on the radio today. And Would I know it if I've heard it? If I, oh, like, totally. if I heard it, would I be like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you would. Yeah. Uh, what's the frequency? Can it? Maybe, maybe I'll try listening to it <laughs> later. <laughs> you that didn't get it from that? Um, that's the only line of the song I know. So <laughs> I wish I could have <laughs> <have done. laughs> So anyways, <laughs> in fact, in the mid 90s, uh, like 1995 or six, Dan Rather performed the song with R.E.M. for a comedy what? bit on The Late Show with David Letterman. So like obviously That's hilarious. Everyone was fine. We moved on from What's the Frequency, Kenneth. But in 1997, this weird little event got a lot weirder and a lot more serious after the sentencing of a man named William Tager. So William Tager, he was originally from Charlotte, North Carolina, shot and killed a man named Campbell Montgomery outside the stage for the Today Show. Campbell was a technician and a stagehand for NBC, and oh. apparently William Tager was trying to get into the studio, and Campbell just happened to be the guy that was trying to prevent that from happening because he was obviously mentally disturbed, and he got shot and killed. During the investigation into the murder, William Tager stated that he believed 
television networks were monitoring him and beaming messages into his head. He well, believed they were watching his every move and also sending him signals telling him to do things he didn't want to do. Could you imagine if he was like out and about today and like oh, talked about God. shoes with his friends and then logged into Facebook and saw shoe ads? Yeah, he would have lost it tenfold. Like it yeah. wouldn't have just been one guy that got shot and killed. Yeah. So, yeah, he admitted fully to the murder when he was caught, um, and he also admitted he was the guy who attacked Dan Rather a decade earlier. And they didn't believe him at first. They weren't necessarily even interested in proving that he was the attacker in the Rather case because the statute of limitations for assault, which I believe at the time was five years, was already long past. So it wasn't even a big deal to them. But... They did want to look into it just to be able to better judge the believability and trustworthiness of this guy's full confessions. And yeah, so the photos were shown to Dan Rather, and he did confirm William Tager was his attacker in New York City in 1986. Huh. So it makes What's the Frequency, Kenneth, a little bit darker than just like some, you know, random guy. He's a, you know pre-murderer right. murderer he might have even killed before this is the only guy we know he murdered but uh pretty dark and dan rather was in the center of it i also decided to list good times to pull this um tidbit out and i think uh-huh. anytime you hear an rem song would be a good time to pull this tidbit yeah. out yeah definitely yeah like in you know because if it was 1996 i would be like ashley no you can't tell this this tidbit nine times a day yeah but (laughs) yeah like the last time i heard an rem song was at my friend's uh 40th birthday party like a month ago that totally sounds like a place where you'd hear an rem song 100 percent. and like the last time i had heard an rem song was like i don't even know maybe in 2021 so <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. i don't listen to a ton of rem but when it comes on you're like yeah i'm there man now when it comes on you've got a story to tell now when it comes on i've got a story a terrible story to tell yeah it's not great 